Hey everybody, good morning, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I wanna talk about the number one pitfall in day trading, the number one thing that you need to avoid, and then I'm gonna back that up with three ways to help avoid this number one pitfall. The reason I'm aware of this pitfall is because I've fallen victim to it. I think probably everyone I've ever spoken to about trading has fallen into this pitfall, and it's just something you need to avoid but it's so, so hard because you have to trust in what you're doing and in your system in order to avoid this pitfall. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this. Let's talk about this. The number one thing, the biggest pitfall you need to avoid is lack of consistency. Now stick with me for a second. Let me explain. That sounds kind of fluffy, like, oh, you know, easy to say, you know, you got to be consistent. But let me just break this down for you. When people, when traders are inconsistent, here's what happens. Tell me if you've ever fallen victim to this scenario. Someone talks about, let's say, like a like a crossover moving strategy, right? Let's say these two lines on my chart right here. Uh, I've got the 50 and the 100 SMA. So let's say if you get a crossover, whether it be to the downside or the upside. So let's say if the 50 crosses above the 100, then you go long. And let's say you try it out and it works and you make a nice chunk of money and you move on and you do it again and it works and you're thinking, okay, this is great. Then you take a loser, then you maybe take a winner and a loser and it chops a little bit and then you get a couple winners and you're profitable and you feel good about this. Then you take five, six, seven, eight losers in a row. How many of you at that point, say you took eight losers in a row, how many of you would bail on that system and say, ah, I thought this worked. It, it really didn't. I need, to, I need to look for something else. So you move on to that next strategy. You move on to that next thing. Well, what you've done is you've changed your consistency. So now you start with something new. Now you're going to trade breakouts of the highs. So here's some like highs right here. You're going to trade this breakout. And you start trading this way. And it wins. And it wins and then it loses, and then it wins, and then it loses, and then you take eight losses in a row. What happens? You have to change the strategy again. You say, oh, I guess this doesn't work. But the problem is, most anything works, just not all the time, and what you have to do is stick through it. Kind of like having, I guess, a, a friendship with somebody. You know, you have really good days. Maybe you have a period where like, you have a friend who's who you don't enjoy for weeks or months. That doesn't mean that you, you throw them out and you go find a new friend. You've got to work through that sort of down period to get back to the good period, to get back to the profitable days. So I fell victim to this, and I'll give you an example. I was trading AMD, as many of you know, a certain way, um, trading breakdowns on basically the market open. I hit a period of inconsistency, and I thought, okay, you know what? Maybe it just doesn't work anymore. I should trade this way using different stocks, kind of a different style. And ultimately, I, I had to re refocus and circle back to the fact that I just need to stick it out through sort of this darker period. Because yes, I was still getting winners that would pop up. It's just I needed to get through some of those losing periods by also capturing my winners to help balance them out to get back to a series of maybe winners. And over time, if you can stick through these things, you'll see the law of large numbers play out. So you're gonna see that in 10 trades, you might have a great winning average, but then you might catch a dark run of like four, five, six, seven, eight losers. But then after you get beyond that, you might get seven winners in a row. You gotta stick through it for that thousand trades or that 500 trades. It's a larger number of trades you need to get to because you can't just micro dissect what you've done in the last five or six trades. That's completely irrelevant. As long as your winners are a multiple bigger than your losers, and you have a win rate that you've determined is you know roughly better than 40% of the time, you gotta stick with things. So here's what I think you should do to help you avoid this pitfall, and this really helped me, so that's why I'm presenting them to you. Number one, pick a consistent R value. R value being how much you're risking on the trade. So if you want to risk $300, stay with $300 for a period of time, whether that's one month, two months, three months, stick with that and don't change. If you vary your R value, you're inevitably going to increase your risk level 
right before you go into a series of losses. And then you're going to back off and you're going to lower it. And then once you lower it, then you're going to win. It seems like that works out that way a lot of times where you put more risk on, you take a loser. If you take risk off, you tend to have a winner. It seems like it goes that way. So stay consistent. That is tip number one to avoid this pitfall of inconsistency. Stay consistent with your R value. Now, let's move into tip number two. I think that if you can find a trading system that you can explain to someone so that they can do the exact same thing, that helps you maintain consistency. Because if you just say, I look for candles that look bullish and then I see a little pullback and I decide to get long. That's very subjective, and that's a style of trading that some people do, but that typically tends to be higher-level professional traders. I recommend something like, you know, if the, you know, like for what I like to trade, if the 15-minute candle gets broken to the downside, if the low gets taken out, I get short. That's, you can explain that. That's very mechanical. It's systematic. Find a systematic way, whether it's a crossover, you know, if the 10 EMA crosses the 20, I get short. Or the other way, if it crosses up, I get long. Those are ways that you can incorporate systematic mechanics into your trading that will help you be consistent. Because it's hard to be consistent when you say, I look for bullish candles and I get long. There are all kinds of different ways to find bullish candles. And are you near a support level or a resistance level? Did it gap up or gap down? Find a way to be a little more systematic or mechanical. This is just my opinion on that and that will help you become more consistent because you can identify a specific entry point in the market. Now, number three, and this one is very, very important, make sure you have a defined reward to risk ratio. Make sure that your stop is going to be one unit, but that if you win, you're going to win multiple units. So I've recently adjusted my style. I used to shoot for two R targets, and now what I do is I leave that open-ended. I get my stop loss to break even so that I can scratch trades that go against me, but I leave it open full size for a continued bigger move to the downside. And then from there, you can ensure that you're getting larger winners and very small losers. So if you shoot for at least 2 to 1, 2.5 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 5 to 1, those risk to reward ratios will help you be consistent because then you know, okay, I shoot for 2.5 to 1, I need to take it off. Or, um, you know, my style says I can't lose more than 1R. So at 1R, you have to take your stop loss. If you can keep those losses very small and the winners much larger, what that will do is you'll catch a winner and then maybe that'll help you ride out a few losers because you can still be green. Say you win 3 to 1 on one trade and then you lose two trades, you're still up 1R. So it helps you sit through those losers and be more consistent. So I personally had an experience this week where I had a 4.3 R winner, and then now I've lost three in a row. So I'm still green. It's helping me sit through these three losers to hopefully get to a winner very soon. So you have to be able to tolerate the drawdown, and having an oversized winner relative to your losers can really help you sit through um, those darker periods and get to the other side. So pitfall, consistency. People are inconsistent in trading. If you're consistent, then the numbers take care of themselves. But people have such a hard time being consistent because A, it's kind of boring. No one wants to have little loser, little loser, little loser, little loser. But you have to to get to the bigger winners. Trend following systems, perfect example. You might get chopped around for a couple weeks and then get in and catch that large runner. So if you're consistent, you're gonna be in every single trade, you're gonna get knocked out, knocked out, knocked out, knocked out, but then you're in for the larger oversized move. And over time, with enough trades, that helps build that green portfolio or that green p &L. I think a lot of people are looking for home runs, they want the really sexy trades that are going huge, but at the end of the day, I think if you ask a truly profitable trader, they're gonna tell you, I just take base hits, I just gotta sit through, I have losers, I have winners, I just make sure they're unbalanced. My winners are much bigger than my losers, and that helps me stay consistent. So, to stay consistent, we'll review the three tips. 
Make sure you have a defined R value and do not change it. Stay consistent there. That'll help. That'll be helping encourage you to be consistent. If you if you can hold that R value, that consistency will help the consistency of your trading. Number two, have a more systematic or mechanical way of entering trades. That way, that piece can be more consistent. You should be able to describe your entry to a 12-year-old, and they should be able to, to say, oh, okay, that makes sense. I could do that. Or to anyone else, and they should be able to replicate it. You don't have to get fancy. That's the one thing I've learned. You do not have to get fancy and have a secret formula. Just do something consistently. And then number three, have a consistent reward to risk ratio. Make sure your winners are much larger than your losers. And then it's all about just being patient and sitting through for hundreds of reps so that you can get the true numbers, the true averages. Hope this video is helpful. I encourage you to join our private Facebook group. It's free. If you want to join a membership on this channel, it's $25 a month, and I'm doing all my trade breakdowns, private live, live streams, private Slack channel access. It's a small group format, and we're just talking stocks. I'm showing my trades in the morning. It's all kind of real time talking back and forth and discussing the markets. I'd love to have you. $25 a month. Come join us over there. Hope this video was helpful. Hope you had a great trading day today, and we'll see you in the next video.